It has been 65 years since the deadly Colfax tornado. It's one of the worst storms in Wisconsin's history, and it's a story historians don't want people to forget. Colfax was hit the hardest, but the storm also affected the lives of those living in Chippewa Falls. Our own Felicity Bosk sat down with one family who recalls the day that they lost their home. And I happened to look out the window and I asked her if that was a cloud burst. And she says, no, that's a tornado. Get down the basement. But it was a huge storm. It was a, it was a big deal. The whole thing went um, clear from St. Croix County to almost Marathon County. And that's my mom and, mom and sister. And your sister. And cousin. Just my aunt your and cousins. I, I, I was just about to turn five, and I was surprised that I remembered as much as I did. We were running around, we were playing, and pretty soon mom came out and said, she wanted us to come in the house because she said the air was so still. She said, listen, she said, there's not a bird. There, you don't see a cat. You don't see a dog. And I stepped out on the deck on the porch. And like I said, there was just dead air. Then the wind came up. And the wind started to blow really hard. So I thought, I better get in and get the kids down in the basement. And for me, I just remember being in the corner and saying prayers and crying. And then when the house went over, the, the sound that it made, just hearing the wood rip apart, that was really eerie. I kept thinking it was going to come back down on us. I, you know, just like that. What I remember is somebody putting me on a ladder, and then a man reached down and pulled me out of the basement. I think it came out of the blue for a lot of people. And that was part of the reason that it was so devastating. I, there's a little bit of disagreement, but I think almost 30, 28, 30 people died in that uh, storm, in, in the four tornadoes total, about 15 of them in Colfax uh, alone. You know, you can sort of imagine people's, uh, const not only their relief that they're still alive, but their consternation at how in the world do we begin the cleanup of this. I mean, there's... Uh, there are houses that are simply gone. There's, there's a thousand buildings damaged. Uh, there's 400 farms either damaged or destroyed. It's a, it's a huge, huge storm. I, you know, in today's dollars, it cost $80 million in damage back in 1958, but that would translate to about $800 million today. And nowadays they have things for, you know. They have GoFundMe's and but there all was, there stuff. But there was nothing. There was nothing like that back then. No. My sister met her husband as a result of the tornado. About a mile down the road, my husband's oldest brother, Augie, had a house. He wasn't married, he had the farm. So we moved in with them for a few years. She came out to visit with me and the kids. Well, she fell in love with Augie. <laughs> so we had to move. Good <laughs> A lot of times when something I feel that is so life-altering that you don't, it's hard to say you need to change it because something wonderful, will, you know, could come out of it too. I think one of the things that, that is true of people in western Wisconsin uh, is that they're, they come together in a crisis. Uh, and I think that's, that's sort of our, our farm stock in a way, right? Somebody gets their life destroyed. They, go and live with cousins or neighbors or, or whoever. So I think it, in, in, a, in a way, I'm not so sure that changed who we are, but I think it maybe proved who we are uh, to each other, that we're this sort of place who rebuilds. You know. Well, I think, God, I had my family. That other stuff could be replaced, but not my family. That was Felicity Bosk reporting. Taps Swoboda tells News 18 that it took 11 years to afford buying a new home. They did that in 1969 and they still live there today.